just go before the Lord and exalt yes, him for he is good. My Father, we exalt you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, we honor your name the for you are worthy of our praises, O God. We, thank you, God. we exalt you, Jesus, for there is none like you, Jesus, this evening, O Father. We acknowledge your power, O God. When we say there is none like you, Jesus, we honor your name and we exalt your name, Jesus, for there is none like you, God. We exalt you, Jesus, O God. We say there is none like you, Father. We exalt you, Jesus, O God. My Father, we exalt you, Jesus, O God. We exalt you, Father. You are so mighty, Lord. You are so mighty, Jesus, O God. There is none like you, Father. We exalt you, Jesus, O God. Have your way in this place, O Father. Even as we hear your word, O Father, may you have your way, O God. As we listen to your word, O God, may you have your way, O God. Thank you, Jesus, because of your word, O Father. Come and speak to us, O Father, through the word of God, O God. Speak to us, O God, in a mighty way tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ. We wait upon your name, O God. We wait upon you, Jesus, Holy Spirit, O God. Come and control us, O God. Come and take control. Come and take preeminent in our lives in the name of Jesus, O God. We exalt you, Father, for there is none like you, God. O God, we exalt you. We worship you, Jesus, O God. There is none like you, Father, Spirit of God. Come and have your way in this place, O Father. Come and have your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, your word, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. You are worthy of our praises, O God. We want to praise your name, for there is none like you, Jesus. You deserve our praises. You deserve our worship, O God. And we raise a soul of worship to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, tonight, in the name of Jesus, O God. You deserve it, O God. Thank you, Father. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus, O God. We exalt you, Jesus, O Father. We exalt you, King of Kings, O God. We exalt you, Redeemer. Thank you for your loving kindness, O Father, power in our lives, O God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for unconditional love. Upon our lives, upon our families, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. Oh God, we, we exalt you. Oh Father, Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We love you, Jesus. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to give you adoration. I thank you, Jehovah Lord, Father, for the privilege you've given unto us this wonderful evening. Indeed, Lord, Father, we are gathered in your presence. And our desire is, Jehovah Lord, to know you more and more. We desire, Jehovah Lord, Father, that your word will, uh, will, will transform us. Lord, your word will give us the ability to mature in this salvation journey. And God, we are grateful because each and every Thursday, you give us the privilege, Jehovah God, to, to gather in the sanctuary, Lord, to study your word. And today, Jehovah God, is not different. You have given us the privilege to be here. And I believe, Jehovah God, there is such a good moment that we want to have with you. Lord, as we go through your word in the book of Romans chapter 13, I want to pray, Jehovah Lord, that you will give us a deeper understanding of your word. Lord, we are dealing with the topic of leadership from Romans chapter 13. And I pray, Jehovah God, the Lord may you prepare every single word in this particular chapter. The Lord, they will speak to us in such a powerful way. Lord, as we study your word, we pray, Jehovah Lord, for that understanding. We pray for the ability, Jehovah Lord, to receive your word with gladness. And we want to commit our moderator, our brother, unto your hand. The Lord, as he stands to lead us through the book of Romans chapter 13, the Lord, you will use him as a vessel. Thank you, Jehovah Lord, for using our praise and worship, O God, in taking us through the, 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 the time, O God, in the presence of God, as we worship the Lord and as we 
Declare that indeed you are the great I am. Father Lord, we thank you. We want to pray for the church of God. We want to pray for the body of Christ. We want to commit up, Lord, every vessel of God unto your hand. Father, we pray, Jehovah, Lord, that worshiping you shall not be a burden, Lord, but it shall be a mission fulfilled in your word, according to your word, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, in this season, O God, of Easter, Lord, we pray that, Lord, may the power of the cross become meaningful in our lives every single day in the name of Jesus, that we shall acknowledge the Lord, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross was it in vain. And Lord, as a result of that power of cross, we received the salvation. Lord, we honor you and we worship you. We want to give you praises. We want to give you honor. We want to give you all the praise, O oh God. Receive all the glory because God, you're mighty. You are wonderful. You are a great Jehovah. Father, we pray, O oh God, for those who are listening to us tonight. Father God, for those who are going to be here physically, and even those who are following us online, O oh God, and those who shall interact, King of Kings, with the teaching of today and with the study of your word of today. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that each and every single vessel, each and every single person will be transformed, O oh God. We are going to grow to another level. We shall develop the ability to respect, to appreciate to celebrate and to pray to draw the line father may you give us understanding lord through your word that brings conviction that brings understanding the lord we shall receive it with joy with celebration in the name of jesus father we honor you and we worship you because god you are mighty you're holy you are wonderful lord we want to bless your holy name this wonderful evening even for the church oh god here at central king of kings we thank you for each and every week the lord you are ministering to us oh god on a sunday on a tuesday on a wednesday on a thursday and even fridays oh god lord father even the weekends lord we are grateful as a ministry that god you have availed for us many opportunities and platforms Jehovah lord to to receive your word and to have a fellowship with you, O God. Father, we pray that the church of God through central, Lord, we shall grow in the matters of salvation. There will not be ret uh, retrogression. There will not be stagnation in our lives. Father, we shall advance. We are being given the guidance on how to cross over, Lord, because it is our time to arise and cross over, Lord, and conquer to the glory and honor of your name. Father, bless us and minister to us because God, you are holy, you are a faithful God. Be thou glorified and be thou lifted up. In Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Uh, if we can put our hands together and uh, celebrate the living God. Uh, good, good, good uh, evening. How are you? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it is such a, an opportunistic time to be in the presence of God on this very day, even as we want to, uh, to continue with the study of the book of Romans. Uh, this particular book, we introduced it somewhere in the month of August in the year uh, 2023, and all along, uh, God has ministered to us through the book of Romans. I just wanted to understand every aspect of salvation so that even as we say we are born again and as we, as we walk in Christianity and in salvation, we shall not just walk with people uh, like people without knowledge, but like people who are well equipped. And to be well equipped is to receive the word of God. There is no any other way that you can be equipped apart from receiving the word of God. So that is why I'm really, really bless this wonderful evening that we are gathered here because we just want to have another time in the presence of God, study God's word, and um, be blessed as we have always been blessed. So I want to um, maybe as we, as we wait for our moderator to uh, take, uh, take over, 
I want to uh, find out some of the few things, maybe uh, evaluating what we've done, what have you learned before uh, we picked it from chapter. God has been speaking to us on a particular theme or a sub theme, and I believe that we are blessed in many ways. But it is always good to evaluate and just to find out how much have you been impacted, how much have you been blessed, what has God spoken to you, what has God um, uh, brought into your understanding. So that is what I want us to do at the time, at this particular moment. Yeah, I know our number is big. This is a big number. Even if it is about greeting it, it will be very uh, in order. It will be in order. So uh, we are just taking some uh, short time to allow our moderator to come and uh, pick it up. Wana Yesu asifiwe? Yeah. Is there anyone who would want even to greet us? Even if you are coming for the uh, Bible study for the very first time, it is, uh, it is in order even for us also to know and uh, appreciate your coming. It is, it is in order. Wow. <laughs> okay, my brother, you yes. can say something. <laughs> yes, praise God. Amen. Yeah, uh, me, I want to thank God for the opportunity of allowing us to be in his presence this evening. And uh, according to what pastor has asked me, uh, something that I can remember from the previous lessons that we've had from the previous teachings that we've had from the word of God is that uh, uh, like salvation, God has given, uh, has given it to all of us, those who believe in Jesus Christ. So it is no longer for the Jews and it is no longer for, for what? For, for maybe some kind of people, but it is for all of us, those who believe in Jesus Christ. So that is what I can say. And then also maybe to add on is that uh, uh, like God has given all of us uh, gifts those who are believers, God has deposited something in us, whether you are a new believer, whether you are a young believer, whether you are a, a, like a mature believer, there is something that God has put in each one of us that which we can do in the kingdom of God. So we can never just sit down and then say, maybe I'm just a, a believer and then you're just seated, but there is something that God has given you that you can do in his kingdom. So we can embrace it and then we do it for the glory and honor of God, and above all, doing it with humility. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Amen, amen. Thank you for that kind of uh, something that can impact your life. And uh, as we all understand, one of the things that has been shared with us is the universal um, uh, salvation that we enjoy. We do not have a limitation that this is just a reserve for somebody else. But all of us, we qualify. We are God's children, and the salvation that God has given to us is for us all. Thank you very much, brother, for that powerful um, uh, sentiment. Any other reflection over what we have learned before, before we invite our moderator of the day? Someone? Highlights of the previous uh, lessons learned? We do not just want to introduce chapter 3. Wonderful. So I want us to put our hands together. We want to invite our brother Paul, who is going to take us through chapter 13. Just as I asked you last week, week that you go read uh, Romans chapter 13, and uh, it is such a powerful chapter. And uh, maybe from the poster you saw, we are going to handle this very important topic of leadership in chapter 13. So I want to invite you, follow us through the reading of God's word, through the participation in whichever way you can, that God ministers to us such that when we come out of the church today, we shall all be celebrating, appreciating, valuing, praying for the leaders that God has given to us, knowing that God is having leadership at the center of his heart. God bless you. Let's put our hands together and invite our brother Paul. Amen. Welcome, brother Paul. Wow, we can do much better than that. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Praise God. Yeah, it's yet a, an, another day that God has given us for us to be able to come and meet together and share this uh, bread of life because without this bread of life, uh, there's nowhere we can go. So we really need the word of God in our lives for it uh, to be able to minister into our hearts, for it to be able to help us know the will of God upon our lives that are, be, uh, that are before you. Okay. Okay, let me just start with a word of prayer. Mighty and everlasting Father, we bless your holy name. We worship you, God. We give you glory, honor, and adoration, Lord. Lord, we come before you right now, O God, praying that you may minister unto our hearts, Jehovah. Lord, how I pray that you may cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Wherever you've wronged, Lord, I'm praying for your forgiveness. Guide us, O God, and use, use me as a vessel, O God, to uh, speak oracles uh, that come from you, Jehovah. We lift your name high and we exalt your holy name. Lord, we are anticipating for your blessings uh, upon uh, the word that we, we learn today, Jehovah. We thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Wow. Uh, today we are covering uh, the book of Romans chapter 13, and it's such an interesting uh, topic for us. So I believe uh, we'll be blessed. Uh, last week, uh, brother, brother Alex was able to take us through uh, the, the last through about uh, the love in action how Christians should live, how the love of God, how we should have the love of God in our lives, how we should uh, pray for our enemies. All this, we saw it uh, uh, in the previous, in the previous uh, lessons that he has taken us through. And I remember Brother Luyali also took us through, uh, he's the one who started uh, the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, and it's such a, a powerful chapter because here is where, the, where we learn about having, uh, offering ourselves as living sacrifices, uh, which is holy and pleasing to God. We also learned about uh, not conforming to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed in the renewing of our mind. Then through that, we'll be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will upon our lives. Amen. So uh, just uh, before I connect uh, with uh, last, last week's uh, lesson, I would like us just to have a brief background of Romans chapter 13. I would like us to know why was Paul uh, addressing this issue of uh, sub, uh, sub, submitting to the governing authorities. Uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the book of uh, Romans, this epistle is known as the book of salvation. And most theologians recognize this book um, as one of the most important book or the most important epistle because it teaches all the main truths uh, of the Bible. I'm not saying that all other epistles are not as important as this, but uh, the, the reason uh, this book was that important, the reason the theologians uh, uplift this book so much, it's because it touches all kinds of doctrines in which a Christian uh, should have or should learn. And we, uh, the book of Romans is the finalization of the word of God uh, you know the early fathers, the early uh, fathers of the early church. They ha God gave them um, f this uh, epistle to be the first epistle in the book. 
uh, in the in the in the New Testament. Why is it so? Why did they? Why? Because uh, this is the fifth epistle that Paul wrote, but they they took this book and put it uh, in front of all the other epistles. Uh, this is because, uh, as I've told you, that this book contains all the main doctrines that we need to have as a Christian. And all the other epistles, including uh, the epistles of uh, Peter, the epistle of John, the epistle of uh, Jude, the epistle of James, all the doctrines that we find in these other epistles, they're all included uh, in Romans. So Roman, uh, I can say the book of Romans has the complete doctrines that is being taught in all other epistles. And I think that is why they, uh, they had to put it uh, to be the first epistle uh, in, the, in the New Testament. So uh, we know the book of Romans was uh, written uh, around AD 57. Uh, this is where uh, Paul was addressing so many issues. We've learned about uh, this book from chapter 1. Now we are all the, all the way to now we are in 13. And the reason he was, uh, he was uh, writing this letter is to answer the questions that he was receiving from uh, the Gentile Christians who are in Rome. So in AD uh, 47, Paul wrote this letter on his fundamental views on how the church and state should relate. During this time, uh, there, was a, there was relative peace uh, between uh, the Gentile Christians and the state of Rome. They enjoyed the peace, but they had a few questions to Paul regarding authority and submission to the state or to that uh, uh, to that government of Rome, because uh, they had they they had an issue, because these people were pagan believers. These people uh, they were taxing them, so they didn't understand as Christians where should we stand. So we are we are going to learn uh, why Paul was addressing this issue, and I hope we'll be blessed. So. Uh, during this time, it was, uh, it was Emperor Nero who was ruling. He took over his father. Uh, he took over from his father, Emperor Claudius, who was very evil. Uh, he was known in persecuting Christians, and even he banished out all the Jews from Rome during his reign. All the, there were the Jewish Christians who were there, and there were the Jews who were practicing uh, Judaism in, in that city he banished them all to, to come out of uh, to come out of that uh, of that uh, of that state so he was known to persecute christians and uh, just as i've said uh, he he expelled all the jews from rome but his uh, he, his wife agrippina killed him and that is how emperor nero came to power so the first years of Emperor Nero, that is AD, uh, AD 54 all the way to AD 59, uh, there was that relative peace and the Christians were enjoying through his reign at this time. But after that, uh, the true colors of Emperor Nero uh, came to be first. He was even most, he was more evil than uh, the father. Because he, uh, he was known in inventing ways of how to kill Christians. One of the ways that is really known in the, in the, in the historical books, he used to light up Christians. They, he put them in a pole. Uh, he, he, make the, uh, he, he waxed them. Then they are, they are lit as torches. And they were lighting the streets of Rome. That's how evil... Uh, Emperor Nero was. He even killed his mother. He even killed his advisors. Uh, some people uh, say that maybe he was not uh, well. Uh, he, he, he wasn't, uh, he, his mind was, had gone berserk during that time when he was doing all these kinds of evil. He started very well, but all of a sudden he became so evil and uh, 
in the in the not in the history books he's regarded as the most evil emperor who has ever reigned uh, in Rome so uh, uh, this during this time it's when even Paul got killed actually it's Emperor Nero who orchestrated the death of Paul so there were so there were so many issues that uh, Paul had to deal with uh, during the, this peaceful time that they had. Because uh, this letter was written around AD 57, and during that time, there was peace uh, among the Christians and the state uh, of and the, and the state of Rome. So here today we are going to learn about uh, about uh, about a submitting authority to the government. There are, there, are, there are other two things, main uh, areas where we really need to learn about submission. One is family, second is church. There are many other areas where we can learn about submission, maybe in our work areas and all that, but the main, uh, the main areas where the Bible emphasizes more is uh, submission in a family setup, in a church setup, and government. So just to go, uh, uh, briefly just to go through uh, submission uh, to the family. Here we know that the word of God is very clear on the flow of authority that should be in every Christian home. Uh, God is our first and foremost authority that must be respected. Second, it's the husband or the father in the home. For he has given authority over his home along with responsibilities for their well-being. And third is the mother's authority over her children. It is, it is right in the Lord's eye that husbands are in submission to God's authority, wives are in submission to their husbands' authority, and children to their parents. This is the way God has ordained for us in the Bible. So I would like us just uh, to read Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to verse 33 so that you may see uh, this kind of authority that Paul is talking about. So Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to uh, verse 33. Uh, I would like someone to read kindly. And let me read uh, from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. The Bible says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he may sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife 
as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so that's uh, just uh, a, a, a brief description of, of authority in a family setup. Amen. So uh, the, next, uh, the next setup is in a church setup. And I would like uh, just, uh, we'll just read a, a, a few verses uh, as we continue. So the apostles teach that the church is the pillar of bitterness of the truth when it acts according to God's word. That is uh, 1 uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Can you go there? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Uh-huh. Uh, it says, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17. Uh -huh. Sec second uh, Timothy from uh, chapter 3 from verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So here we see that uh, church uh, decisions have have divine authority when they are faithful to the apostolic and prophetic uh, revelation of scripture. This authority extends even to matters of salvation. When elders wisely consider a professing believer's life discerned by scripture uh, that the said person is impenitent and excommunicate, uh, and they can excommunicate that individual, the elders are declaring that the man or woman is not a Christian. In such cases, the church and the, uh, and the disciplined individual are to see that God regards a excommunicated person as an unbeliever and not a citizen of heaven. Uh, this reference I, I got from Lognia.org. What, what is it saying here? It's saying how God, God is the absolute authority, but also God has put people in authority in our church setups. And here we have seen like, an el, uh, like the elders. If the elders uh, regard this person that is not a Christian and according to the scripture, they have gone through uh, the way they should uh, maybe try to restore this person, then God regards that person as an unbeliever. That is how uh, powerful uh, God is stressing about authority in a church. There are so many ways uh, uh, where we can learn about authority. I remember those who are here in the, on Sunday in the Workers' Fellowship. There's something that Reverend Alan uh, talked about. He said that this church is quite big and there's no way that uh, our bishop can reach each and every one of you. So what we really need uh, to do is to uh, recognize uh, the growth center pastors as an authority, as the representatives of uh, GO. So whatever, and he said, even if your growth center pastor, uh, maybe he's not that eloquent or, or he's not that uh, good, maybe, uh, Maybe he's not gifted, maybe in sharing the word, but God has given him that authority. And him being there, he is the authority that is there. He's the one who is representing uh, our GO. So that's how serious authority should be. There are so many departments uh, in, in a church. There's the ushering department. There's the media department. There's the... There's, there's the missions department, prayer departments. All these departments are led by deacons. 
and, and the deacons, uh, they are assisted by uh, ministry leaders. So as you're serving in that uh, department, you really need uh, to obey your leaders. You really need uh, to support your leaders. And no, even if the leader is not, uh, maybe is not, uh, he, he, in one way or the other, is, uh, is not doing what's supposed to be, uh, to be done. Your work is to pray for them. Your work is to, uh, just to support them in their ministry. That's how uh, a church setup should be. Uh, if you read uh, uh, somewhere in First Corinthians, is it uh, chapter 12, or is it chapter, yeah, I think it's chapter 12, uh, whereby we learn about uh, the body of Christ, that we have, uh, the, it consists, uh, like a, just like a body, it consists of uh, many body parts, but each and every body part is very important. There's no way uh, the eye can say that I cannot work with the ear, or the hand can, cannot work with the feet. We are all equally important. So all we really need to do is to be submissive to authority, recognize the authority that has been put there by God, and there will be peace and all will be well, and there are blessings that are bestowed upon you if you do what it's supposed to be done. Amen. Amen. So God's word has made it clear that we are in the submission of those uh, in authority over us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it says, obey them, that, obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is, the, is unprofitable for you. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Rebellion is a serious sin in the eyes of God. And in the Old Testament, those who are rebellious, they were put to death. As we see in Joshua chapter 1, verse 18. Joshua chapter 1, verse 18, there's an example there. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed to, uh, to your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and be of good courage. Amen? So uh, we see that rebellion is a sin which is so great that it falls into the category of witchcraft. Why am I saying that? It's not me. It's the word of God. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. It says, For rebellion is, this, is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as, in, is as iniquity and idolatry. So, uh, this uh, rebellion is an abomination before the Lord. And because, uh, as you continue uh, reading uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, it says, Because thou has, you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being a king. This is when uh, King Saul, uh, instead of obeying the word of God, he thought that he was doing uh, right. Uh, he was by him sacrificing instead of uh, Samuel. He thought that he was doing the right thing, but to God that was rebellion. Even at times in our in our lives, as uh, members of this church, in various departments that we are in, we may think that we are serving the Lord by doing things that are in contrary to the protocol that is to be observed. God regards it as rebellion. No matter what, it's regarded as rebellion. And rebellion is compared to witchcraft. And witchcraft is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. So uh, as, we, uh, as we study this uh, word about authority, let us have the reverence of God. Because he's the one who is the absolute authority. And he's the one who appoints other people to be in authority or other institutions to be in authority. So uh, those are the brief uh, uh, description of, uh, of 
authority in a church setup and in a family setup. So uh, today we are going to learn about uh, authority in uh, in an institu uh, in in a in a government. Because because uh, to be in context with chapter thirteen, it's speaking about the the government. So in this context of chapter 13, Paul vividly teaches about the church and the governing authority. So we really need to know uh, where the church lies and where, uh, between, uh, where the church lies and the state lies or the government lies, where we need to submit and obey. Amen. So I'd like us to go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, hope we are there, and I would like us uh, to read uh, the f uh, Romans 13 uh, verse 1, Roman, someone can read Romans 13 uh, verse 1. Romans 13, verse 1. Hmm. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authority, authorities that exist have been established by God. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, by the way, uh, the, the, in this uh, chapter, we are going to learn about two things. One is submission to governing authorities, that is from verse 1 to 7, in which by God's grace we'll be able to tackle today. And the other one from verse 8 uh, all the way to uh, verse, all the way to verse uh, 14, we are going to learn about uh, the love, uh, how love fulfills uh, the law. So uh, thank you, my brother. So we have seen that here that that the governing authority for, uh, okay, let me just read, for let everyone be subject to every governing authority, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. As, we, uh, as I was starting, I say that the first absolute authority is God. Amen. And uh, the, the other authorities, it's God who allows uh, those authorities to be, to be established. And here we see one of them, that God is the one who establishes uh, a government, any government in any nation. It doesn't uh, matter whether it's a pagan nation or a Christian nation. It's any government. It's the one that God appoints, and he has his own divine reasons why he does so. So here Paul describes the biblical doctrine of submission to human authorities, uh, something which also Peter teaches in First Peter chapter 2 from verse 13 to 17. First Peter chapter 2 from verse 13 to 17. You can go there. Someone can read. First Peter chapter 2, from verse 13 to 17. No one? Okay. Uh, let me just read. It says, uh, submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong, to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing, uh, doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people, live as 
free people, but do, do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as, uh -huh. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. Amen. Actually, uh, that scripture is really connecting us. Uh, it's really connecting us from uh, chapter 12, coming all the way uh, to, to chapter 13. It's a call for all believers in Christ to be submissive to, uh, to uh, governing authorities. So there are key words I would like us to know today. One of them is submission, and the other one is obedience. I would like someone to tell me, what is submission? What is submission? Someone can try it out. What is submission? Okay, uh, what is submission? Submission is the action of accepting without coercion or reading willingly uh, to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. Example, the national government. So submission should not be uh, selfish or hypocritical. The notion what, the, this notion of what is, what in it what is in need for me? That one should not be part of us. That what are we benefiting from this? It should be a sincere because it is the will of God. So uh, believers must be submissive to authority, but must also have wise and discerning to know the circumstances where, where they are to obey or not to obey them. So we have seen here that the government is an instrument of God. It's an instrument of uh, bringing authority uh, unto us. But there are situations that we are going to learn today that uh, will dictate us if we are to obey authority or not to obey, uh, to obey authority. And we'll see uh, some examples from the word of God. Amen. So that's the definition of submission. What is obedience? Come on, someone can, can tell us what is obedience. What is to obey? Or what is obedience? What is obedience? Okay. Uh, what is obedience? Obedience is to comply with, align with, or accept an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. So there are, there are a few examples I'd like us to see where the apostles did submit to the, uh, gover to the governing authorities, but they did not obey everything that uh, they, uh, they were being told. That is, if what they were being told was in contradiction to the will of God. So I'd like us to go to Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5 from verse 27. Acts chapter 5 from verse 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Acts uh, chapter 5 from verse 27, it says, The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and are determined to make us guilty for this man's blood. Peter and other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. Amen. So this is an, an area where Peter... Yes, they were submissive to the, to the governing authority in Jerusalem. But uh, what, whatever they were being told uh, was in contradiction to the will of God. Because one of the 
uh, um, uh, one great uh, thing that you know about uh, us Christians is the commandment that you've been given, the great, which is the great commission, that we must share this gospel everywhere we go. Uh, we, we, know, we know it very well that that is what we've been called to do. And Peter knew that. And here they had to submit to the authority of God. And that is obeying the commandments of God. Rather than obeying, uh, obeying the, the governing authority of Jerusalem at that time. They were, they were being told not to uh, to. Uh, to preach the word of God. They were being told not to uh, speak in the name of Jesus. But Peter knew that. W uh, Peter knew the will of God. And the will of God was for them to share this gospel. And they refused to do so. There are so many other instances uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, there are some places we see Paul and Silas uh, being flogged because of sharing this word because they refused uh, to bow down to the pressure of being told not to share uh, the gospel. There are so many, even in the Old Testament, there are so many areas. Like one of them, one of the good examples is the story of Daniel. We remember that uh, Daniel and his friends in Daniel chapter 6 from uh, verse 11 to 11. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 7 to 11. I would like us just to go there and be able to see. Uh, Daniel chapter 6 uh, from verse 7. Someone can read that from verse 7 to 11. The Bible says... The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty... Issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Dairas put the decree in writing. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Yeah, we can stop it at that. Amen. So here we see a decree that came that, uh, that was in contradiction with uh, God's will. Uh, there was a way uh, Daniel was praying uh, to God three times a day. So there were people who wanted uh, to test uh, Daniel to see if uh, he can disobey God. And they, uh, in a way, they, uh, they were mischievous and they made this uh, law to come into uh, publication. And we see that Daniel that 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 uh, that law did not deter Daniel from doing what he was supposed to do. Even in our in our setup right now, as a government, let's say okay. Uh, it's known that uh, our nation. Uh, some people say it's a Christian nation. Others say it's a secular nation. Let's say uh, okay. I thank God for the nation of Kenya, because there is the freedom of worship and Christians can continue ministering the word of God without any form of provocation from the government. But what if uh, the government comes right now and says that we should not preach the gospel? 
at that instance, what can you do as a Christian? Should you obey the government or should you obey the word of God? There are so many other nations that where Christianity, if you're caught uh, just sharing the word of God, you can be even put, in, uh, you can be put to death. The, the Islamic countries uh, in the Middle East where Christians are being persecuted of just sharing the word of God. Even Israel itself, Christians, are, they, they, that law that was to, to be passed a, a, few, a few years ago, I think like two years ago, there were some uh, ministers, or, uh, like members of parliament in, that, uh, in the nation of Israel. They were saying if any Christian who, uh, they wanted it to be passed, that if there's any Christian who is trying to convert any other person in that nini should be thrown to jail and even uh, being uh, jailed for life. But I thank God it didn't, uh, it didn't pass. But we are living in the last days and we don't know what is ahead of us. We don't know what is coming. There's the pressure of this, of the world trying to uh, put Christianity down. Like, for, like now, we, we, we used to know that uh, America was a Christian nation founded by uh, men who feared God. But right now, you cannot, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually illegal to just say the Lord's Prayer in some states, in some uh, institutions in some states in the United uh, States. It's wrong to share the word of God. It's wrong to preach uh, in the streets. It's wrong to, uh, to, uh, to proclaim that Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. We have seen it in the UK. We have seen it in Canada. These are nations that were well known for being Christian nations. What if that kind of uh, that, that kind of how can I put it? Uh, that kind of um, authority comes upon the nation of Kenya in, in the near future. As a Christian, what should you do? Here we have seen Daniel. We have seen Daniel that no matter what, he chose to do what he used to do. Pray three times a day. And no matter what, he did what uh, he was called to do. And uh, if you read that story, you see it's where he's thrown uh, in the den of lions, but God miraculously comes through for him. And those who, were, who made this decree to be uh, published in that nation, they were, they were the ones who were put to death together with their, with their families. Uh, there's another good example in the book of Daniel chapter, nine, uh, chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. Daniel chapter 3, verse, uh, yeah, it says, but even if he, okay, maybe we can start from verse 16. Let's go to verse 16. Uh, Okay, I'd like to encourage you just to go and read the whole of Daniel chapter 3. But let us just read, for today, let us just read from verse 16. We see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, but even if he does not, we want you to know, Your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. So here uh, they were being told uh, to bow down to the sculpture of or the image of King Nebuchadnezzar, but these three chose not to do so, and they were very courageous. And he, 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 they told the authority that even if God does not come for us, we cannot bow down to this image. So that is the Christian 
uh, attitude that we should have when it comes to defending the faith. We really need to share this gospel no matter what. This is the, one of the areas where we cannot bow down to authorities that are subjecting us not to do the will of God. But remember, uh, we are in verse 1, that this authority is, has been established by God. And we are going to see why is God establishing this authority and yet uh, if we try uh, to follow the, the kinds of these authorities, then we are, it, we are regarded as being rebellious. We are going to see it uh, clearly. So uh, I would like us to read uh, verse 2. It says, uh, Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. For those who do, for those who do so, will bring will bring judgment upon themselves. For the rulers hold no terror for those who have, who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then, do what is right, and you will be commended. Verse four. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear this for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, uh, bringing uh, punishment on the wrongdoer. Okay. Let's, uh, let, let us stop there at verse 4. So here uh, we learn that this, uh, this authority is God's, uh, they are God's servants. <laughs> Here it's, uh, it's uh, I'm praying that whatever question that you'll ask me, I'll be able, uh, we'll be able to reason out together. Amen. So, uh, I would like us uh, to to know that all authority is instituted by God, we may ask ourselves who, why we should submit. And the answer is very clear that every authority in the world has been established by God. This includes, of course, good leaders, the evil leaders, and everyone in between. So uh, we saw the definition of submission and obedience. We are told to submit, but and also to obey. But there are some instances that we should not obey. That is, if uh, the governing authority is, no, is uh, trying to rule uh, in a way that is not in the will of God. And you have seen the examples. You have seen the examples of uh, Peter, we have seen Paul, we have seen Daniel and his friends. So, for us to be able to understand or to be, for us to be able to know that this authority comes from God, there are a few uh, places where God says so. Like in, in the book of John, chapter 9, verse 11. Here we see uh, Pontius Pilate was put in authority by God as pointed out by Jesus. Uh, Pharaoh was also raised to serve God, for uh, to serve uh, to serve uh, God or for God's glory to be seen through he, through the way he was ruling during that time. That is in Exodus chapter nine, verse sixteen, and also Romans chapter nine, verse seventeen. So, as believers, who we, uh, as us as Kenyans. We must submit to our president and his government, even though we, in, uh, we are in this wake of high taxations. We must submit to the police, but not condone with corruption. Here we have read that if you're doing what is right according to the laws of the nation, no one will be, uh, no one uh, will come against you. You, you live uh, in peace. And you will not, you'll not need to be afraid of the rulers that have been put there 
because you're work, you're doing what is right. Um, a good example is like last year. You know, the week of the first, the last last year, the first uh, the first months of 2023. There was this uh, uh, there was this uh, thing that we know as mandamano. As Christians, should you participate in mandamano? Should you? It's a good example because we have seen it because uh, weren't there deaths? Weren't there uh, uh, property destruction? And many people were arrested. So imagine as a Christian, uh, and you know this is against uh, the law of the nation. I, okay, the law states that uh, for peaceful mandamanos and all that, but if you choose to break that law by doing what is not, is not uh, that is uh, what is not supposed to be done those are the kind of consequences but as christians let us first of all learn that we uh, there are the systems of this world and the reason god has put these systems in this world is to ease and it's to make us have is to make us be able to live uh, in in harmony to be able to be able to live in peace. That is why God brings, uh, allows these uh, authorities to be there. Imagine uh, a nation without a government. For example, right now, there is Haiti. You know what is happening in Haiti? There is a lot of anarchy. The gangs, eh, criminal gangs are the ones that are ruling uh, there. Look at the kind of disorder that is there. So many deaths some people are killed. There are so many rape cases there. There is no order. But just us having a government, that is one of the ways God is trying to bring order to a nation or to the entire world. Remember that we are, we are not of this world. We are just by, we, 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 are, we are just aliens. But since we are in this world, God is easening a way for us to live in this world as we await the second coming of Christ, whereby we'll be able to rule with Christ for a thousand years. So that kind of order is a way that God is bringing uh, unto, unto, unto the world just for the sake of his people here. Though it may not be perfect, but at least there's, an, there's order. For example, just uh, a, a, a good example is like how traffic light works. Imagine if there are no traffic lights, how, or maybe there are no traffic policemen to just order how the cars should go. Everyone would like, uh, would, there will be a lot of mess, and in one or the other, they will, uh, the, the, the cars will be intertwined that there will be no movement. But because of the order that is there, uh, I, I, I call it common grace. This is a common grace that God has given us uh, in, in this world for us to be, to be able to ease the things uh, in this world, especially for the believers. Even if you go uh, to other countries that are well known uh, to persecute Christians, there is order there. And through that order, in one or the other, other there's a way God makes things right. Like for example, right now in Iran, uh, Iran is a is an Islamic nation. It became to be uh, first it was a secular nation, then it came to be an Islamic state. And right now, Iran has the biggest underground church that is there. Why am I saying this? Uh, just the other day, the uh, I saw in the news that over 87,000 mosques are being closed because there are no people who are going there. But there are underground churches where uh, people, uh, where Christians, where, is, uh, where Muslims are being converted in, into Christianity. Why, why, am I, why am I giving this example? For example, if there was a form of anarchy in this nation, do you think Christians as much as they are hiding themselves, do you think they can survive? What I'm trying to say is that 
there's a, there's a reason why God brings uh, this, uh, this order. They, we can't explain it fully, we can't understand it fully, but he's full of wisdom and he knows why he puts uh, governments or laws that are to be, to be followed. Amen. So uh, we'd like us uh, to continue uh, verse 5. Verse 5 it says, Therefore it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a, mat as a matter of conscience. You should not submit to authority uh, just to, because of fear of punishment, but have this understanding that it is God who has put this authority there, and it is us, it's for us to follow the kind of authority. Of authority. We, we may dislike uh, our governors, we may dislike uh, our president, our MCAs, or those who are in power, but remember, God is the one who has put them there. Whether they came through rigging, whether they, they came uh, through election and all that, God allowed it to be that way. And it's our work for us to pray for the leaders. As the word of God says, that pray for those who are in power so that there may be peace in a nation. So we ought to pray even for our nation, Kenya. Whether you like our president and his uh, leaders or not, we, it's our work to pray for them so that there may be peace in this nation. Amen. So that, they may, uh, they, they are my, so that uh, the freedom of worship can continue. S uh, so verse 6, it says, This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, who gives their full time of, uh, full time to governing. Amen? We should pay taxes as Christians. Do you agree that? Do you really agree? We saw that example. Uh, uh, we saw that example uh, with Christ. We saw an ex a, a good example from Christ. He paid taxes. You remember that time that uh, he ordered, uh, was it Peter, to go and get some money from a fish to pay taxes and he said that give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So uh, we, we, we need to pay taxes as we are required to. Even if uh, the taxes are high, I think uh, the work of a Christian is to pray that God may touch our president because he's the one who directs the hearts of kings to lower down the taxes. But even if it's high, we really need to pay taxes. Amen. And we are praying that uh, through these taxes, our nation will prosper in, in the future. And our kids will be able to enjoy what is, uh, uh, will be able to enjoy the fruit of our paying of taxes. Amen. Is there a, a question? Yeah. Is there a question? Are we continuing? Okay. So uh, we we need uh, we need uh, to pay taxes because uh, this this is what Paul is teaching, and it's a way of submitting uh, to the authorities in place. Whether we use uh, whether the the government is using it wisely or unwisely, or not, uh, it's not for us to judge. We simply need to pay our tax. God provides us even with means of doing so. Uh, Apostle Paul also teaches uh, the believers uh, about paying taxes. That is, uh, we've seen that that uh, we see the verse six and seven and. Just as I've said um, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 to 22, we see Christ advocating for it. Amen. So uh, verse 7 says, uh, Give everyone what you owe them. If you 
if you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So here we see that uh, Apostle Paul uh, raising the stakes. Uh, it does not just end with uh, paying taxes. He also goes on to add uh, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. So uh, this means it's not only just paying taxes. If, if it's respect, uh, give those leaders respect. If it's honoring them, Give them that honor. And one of the ways uh, I have seen in our church, when a, a, a politician come, comes here, um, especially when during these times of election, I like the way Gio does. He prays for them and wish them well. Amen. So it's a way of honoring the kind of leaders that we, even if you don't like them, just honor them, respect them, and it will all be well with you. Amen. So, in short, uh, believers are called to display the model standard of character and behavior. Remember the marks of a true believer we learned in the previous chapter. That is uh, Romans uh, chapter 12 from verse 9 all the way to 21. Everything that we do uh, must be done in complete uh, in complete geniuses. Jesus taught against uh, retaliation and encouraged love for our enemies. Those, that, that is those who are against us. With the same standards uh, and approach, we must be genuinely uh, accord those in authority the submission, respect, and honor that is due to them because, because it's the right kind of thing to do as Christians. Amen. So uh, at this juncture, I would like to ask if there's anyone with a question or maybe a comment before, uh, before I sit down. Yes. Okay. Maybe somewhere else. Kunamali o metach. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty three, whereby uh, King Saul disobey God. I would like you just to explain uh, it for our Christian today. How can I know that I'm obeying God's rules or I'm walking in the good way because you may think that you want the right way but you're outside although you explain it but you pass faster you won't catch you okay. thank you uh, okay uh, that is first Samuel uh, chapter 15 uh -huh. maybe you can go to uh, first Samuel chapter 15 from verse we see the context of why uh, Paul, uh, why uh, soul was regarded as rebellious. Maybe uh, you can start from verse, okay, is it verse 14 or 15? Then you go down. Hmm? Continue going up. Okay, let's start from there. Uh, early in the morning, uh, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he, he was told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he, he has set up a monument on his own honor and turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached uh, him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Or Saul answered, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle.
to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you as king over Israel. And he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites, wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I, 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 I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the, on the mission of the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder and the best of what was devoted to God in order so, uh, to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God, at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Amen. So that is the context of, uh, of for us to be able to understand why uh, Samuel was saying so that rebellion is as worse as the sin of witchcraft. There are instructions that Saul was given. But Saul, in his own understanding, in his own uh, wisdom, he did what he saw it is right in his eyes. He was told to destroy all the Amalekites and everything in it, but he chose not to destroy everything. He, actually, he thought that by uh, preserving the best sheep, the best cattle uh, of the Amalekites and offering it to God was a way of honoring God. But to God, that was rebellion. And that's why, <coughs> Sorry. And that's why uh, God rejected him, because he was rebellious. So uh, maybe in, in our context uh, t- uh, today, for example, uh, we know like Gio, Gio is our leader here. And he's the one who accords um, authority to other people. This, uh, maybe, let's say, for example, one of the leaders goes against what Gio has said. Maybe he, uh, by doing something that seems to be right and honorable uh, before men, but Gio had, uh, but Gio had not uh, accorded that, that is still rebellion. That, I, I think I'm coming home. Uh, do you really understand? Do you really understand what I'm saying? In, in, in many ways, we may think we are doing right in our own eyes, but in the eyes of God, it's regarded as rebellion. So what we ought to do as Christians is follow the instructions of God as we have been told, not to do uh, things in our, in our own way, as Saul did. Uh, have I answered your question? Okay. Maybe someone can add on that. Okay. Yes, we have uh, someone there. <laughs> now we should know that we not do something that we see is pleasant to our eyes, but we should do what is according as right th- as a right thing to God. Amen. Give a hand clap to that boy. Ah, good. Uh huh. Question. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Mine is a question. I'm asking. Is it is it good to correct those in authority? If yes, how? If no, why? The second one is if we are supposed to submit to these leaders. What about the 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 ones 
who are dictators. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. The first question, is it, uh, uh, is it right to correct uh, those in authority? Yeah? yeah. Okay. And the next one is, uh, should we submit to leaders who are, who are dictators? Okay. Uh, I believe we are here to learn the word of God, all of us. So someone else can help me in, in that. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Maybe I can attempt by saying, uh, I, I, I know when you read the Bible, and especially now we are talking about respect to authority. And then we read Daniel and we see the, the, the interaction between Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, the king, who gives the order contrary to their faith. Uh, and then you read the Ro Romans 13, which says obedience. Now, we, we, we just need to be careful in a way that we know this is to do with our faith. Now, when it comes to faith and the king, then you know that I read Daniel, and I know that I will not bow to this God, that the king is saying bow to the God. But when it comes to uh, the leader is in error, the leader is in error, in, in this case you can see whoever the leader is, and then you are asking yourself, can I correct? Yes, you can in fact, the right word could be, can I give counsel? You, you, you have the right to give counsel if you have an opportunity. But you also need to be careful. Because one of the confrontational uh, situations that happens happen is that uh, you, you, you want to show that the leader, you know nothing completely. Sit there, I teach you how. Now, if the ego, because there's the ego that happens characters. So how you present your counsel, however good it may be, the leader can as well just say no. But for us as Christians, thanks to God, we know how to manage. Because you, you, you are going to approach it spiritual. Because you don't just rise and say, I'm going to see my, even if it is the office, say my manager or the director. You must have been at a place of prayer. So from there you say, God, give me the correct words and the, the, of course the tone <laughs> that you want to use so that I can be able to send the message. Which message then the, the leader or whoever you are giving to us to accept? So you need to be careful, but I believe counsel is necessary. And I think he mentioned about a dictator. I, I think I'll leave it to, to us. But you know that a dictator uh, is not unto God. And I think that is where, again, you, you go to the place of prayer to pray for the king that God can change this one who is a dictator to be one that conforms to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Pastor. Mm -hmm. You satisfied? Okay, is there any other question? Or maybe a comment? Okay, if there's no question or comment, uh, thank you. I hope we have been, uh, you've been blessed and you've been able to learn about uh, authority. So may God bless you. So next uh, week, God willing, we are going to learn about uh, love. Amen. How love fulfills the law. So may God bless you all. So at this juncture, I would like to ask uh, Pastor Shikuku to come. Amen. Uh, can we put our hands together and appreciate God uh, for ministering to us? And uh, I want to say that um, the questions regarding uh, leadership might have not been exhausted and please we would really wish that uh, we don't just rush over uh, the book of Romans chapter 13 1 to 7 that talks about submission to the governing authorities 
So we still give you the privilege to ask as many questions as you can, even if not today. Uh, next week we are still here. Before we embark on Love Fulfills the Law, we can still handle this. Uh, one of the things that I can uh, add uh, to my brother who asked the question about um, how we can know that we are rebellious. I believe any child of God understands that God rules with principles. And the principles that God uses are written in the scripture. If you follow the word of God, it will convict you and it will help you to know when you are on the wrong and how you can come back to the reality that I have gone contrary to what I should do. A rebelling against God is failing to live in accordance with God's will. And there are many ways people have done so. And the Bible gives us the principles that God uses. Secondly, is to touch uh, on the question my brother also asked about whether it is possible to correct a leader and how you can do it. If you look at the story that has been presented to us about Samuel and Saul, Saul was a leader, he was a king, and when he was on the wrong, just as Deacon has said, Samuel used the wisdom God gave to him, and he was able to tell the leader that you are on the wrong in this area. So I believe that if we get to understand how to differentiate submission to the governing authority and also um, <laughs> differentiating what? I'm trying to, bring, uh, to understand it in a manner that I can still submit to the leader because that is what the word of God requires me to do. That is what God expects us to do. Since we have been told that all this leader, lead, lead, leadership that is existing is existing through God's ordination. God has allowed these leaders to be in existence. So I know there is so much we look at the leader, the character of a leader, and how dictator, uh, dictators they are, and uh, whether we truly still need to submit to them. There is one of the verses in that part, uh, chapter 13, that can answer that question. The Bible says in verse 4, For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. While I was coming, I was reading, reading this chapter, and you know I could remember that even when a new president comes into the office, they are given the law, the constitution, they are also given the what? The sword. So when the Bible talks about the sword here, there is no any leader in any nation that does not have that. But the Bible is cautioning us as Christians that if we do wrong, let's be afraid because leaders or rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. So if I'm a believer who is living in the will of God and for sure I understand that the constitution is there the nation is guarded by the rule of law and I abide by the rule of law as God's representative on this particular nation yes that leader may have his weaknesses his shortcomings, is a dictator but there is what God Bible is cautioning us that we need to do in other words as God's children it is expected of us to live in accordance with God's will, a righteous life. And with that, we'll be able to be just on the right side as we do what is expected of us. That is to pray to the leader. The children of Israel were told when they wanted a king. And when Samuel was talking to them, he told them that this is now what is expected of you. One is to pray for that leader. And if we go that way, I think we shall be um, a better citizens to live in accordance with God's will. Wow. I want to bring announcements, but before that, I've seen my brother Kabuye has something to say. Yes, praise God. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Paul, for, for the teaching, and may God bless you. And on adding to the question that our brother has asked, 
uh, like about obeying the dictators that we like obeying the dictators that we we may have uh, when we see in the book of Jeremiah when where God is speaking of that he has good plans for us and plans to prosper us like when you look in that context when God is speaking those words he was telling these people when they were in exile you get so they, these people were in exile but he is telling them to pray for these people where they are to marry there, to plant the crops, to do everything. And if these people where they are prosper, they will also prosper. You get so in this way, God knows that these people where God knows that these people they are in exile and they are going through hard, going through hard times. But he is telling them to do what is right before him. But now God is not a God who is who will leave sin unpunished. Because in the first place, when these people, the Israelites, did what they did, God is telling them that I will raise Babylon to do like to, to do this. And then after the end of the day, he also says that he will punish Babylon for whatever they had done. So even the dictators that we may have, God is telling us to do our part. You get. But then God is also in his sovereign power, will not leave their actions, whatever they have done, unpunished. So us as believers, just like uh, Brother Paul was teaching us, we have to do our part and then God in his sovereign power will also do his part. Thank you. Amen. So let's uh, go to the announcements. I want to bring our deacon on duty, Deacon Kihima, and thank you for even your participation in the study. We really, really appreciate Deacon. You're most welcome. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to appreciate the teaching that is happening here. Uh, to me, it's, uh, it passes for the hot message or the place where we are as, as Kenyans. Uh, we are asking ourselves, how do we behave <laughs> in, in, in a situation where you are like, do I obey or not obey? And I think, uh, Pastor Shkuku, as you journey through, I, I, I want to pray that many will interact with this question so that they can know how to behave in, in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. It's not about leaders, but it's even in, in our offices where we work, we are asking ourselves to obey or not to, to obey. But what is God's opinion on this? So I believe uh, is a study that is practical. Uh, and, and if we get to dig deep, then we will live with the... Uh, good understanding of how a Christian should be. So thank you again uh, for being part of them that have sat under tonight's study. I want again to just appreciate all of us for turning up and uh, let me just bring our a few of the notices to us. Today, today is Bible, Bible study, I think we have been reminded as many times it is starts at 5.30 and uh, for you who have chosen to be here tonight uh, is, I know is a blessing and uh, we just need to encourage others to come. Personally, I also need to encourage myself to come so that we can uh, get to interact with the word of God and apply it even in our, our living. Friday tomorrow, I know it's Good Friday, but the activity that is planned for Friday is we're having a movie uh, called Death of Christ. It's hosted by Excelsior's ministry. This movie will start at 1 p.m. and it will be happening in the fellowship hall. Death of Christ. I think for us as Christians, I think we cannot say we, I mean, we cannot fail to be there as, as in understanding that is for the reason that Christ came, he died, that we are here as Christians to follow. So it's a reminder that happens and it will be happening tomorrow. 
as a movie. Uh, one of the interesting things that happens when you watch a movie, you see it as real. It gives the real message. So I believe for our youth and even for the others who are able to, it will be a good moment of being reminded. So Friday, 1 p.m., be there. Same Friday in the evening from 9.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. we have end of month Kesha. This is a whole night Kesha that is going to be happening here in the main sanctuary. So again, make time to come and pray. On Saturday, we have a conference. It's called Level Up Conference. It's hosted by the Better Acts Ministry. I know they have planned this for, for many days. So the Better Acts, the youth, uh, are reminded that the conference is there and is there for them from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to be happening here in the main sanctuary. So let's pass that message to the youth that the conference is happening. Let's as many as can come and see what there is them. And come Sundays, our services are on as usual. Uh, when I make this announcement, I'm reminded even myself that keep time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is just to remind us that keep time. The first service, you need to be here by 7.15. The second one, be seated at 9.30 a.m. And the third one, also just know that by 11.45, it has started. So our services are on. Same Sunday, our teens and youth also have their service services, which happen from 9.30. First one, and the second one is 11.30 a.m. This happens in the fellowship hall. Same Sunday, we need to be reminded of water baptism service. Those who have not been immersed or baptized in many waters, there's an opportunity for us. So share the message that there's opportunity for us to get baptized for those who have not gone through that water baptism. And then uh, same Sunday at 2.30 p.m., we have Level Up Worship Experience. Level Up Worship Experience, uh, we are reminded that this is open for everyone. I believe this must be guided by our worship worship team. So this is a time to just, let me call it, have a worship experience. So it's for all of us, it will be happening here in the main sanctuary. On Monday, which is Easter, there's also an activity that has been set to happen. It's called Christ Bounds Sports Evangelism. This is hosted again by the Excelsior's ministry. The youth shall be there to make this happen. So Christ Bounds Sports Evangelism. Let's be there so that we can make it a success. This will be happening at the parking grounds. And finally, it's good again to be reminded, uh, we do have our year Bible reading plan. And this week, we are reading 1 Samuel chapter 16 to 2 Samuel chapter 6. Say three chapters daily. So thank you again for coming. And uh, that brings us to the end of our uh, notices. So thank you again for coming. Uh, the last activity I'm reminded again is just a good thing to also come into the house of God with an offering. Uh, that is one way of worship. So I'll pray. I'll pray.
Pastor Shikuku, I don't know whether you are coming back here. Let me just pray for the offering, and then uh, I'll hand it back to Shikuku just to close. Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you. Thank you for the opportunity to come and sit and, 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 and just study your word, O oh God. You remind us that this is food to our spirit. And Lord, as often as we do feed on it, then our spirit shall be alive. And much more, God, we receive counsel from you, O oh God. Father, we thank you that you remind us. You've reminded us even tonight that uh, we have to respect the, the, the authorities that be. And so, Lord, we ask that you give us the wisdom and the counsel to know how to live and respect the authorities that be. Because these authorities, as we are reminded, Father God, they, are there, they have been set by you, O oh God. So, God, we pray that your counsel shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Thank you again, O oh God, this moment, even as we come to the end of this uh, fellowship tonight, we do continue to just pray even for our leaders once again, O oh God, that, Lord, you shall shape them, especially so even our government leaders, God, you shall shape them and guard their hearts, O oh God, Father, that they shall draw from you the counsel and the wisdom that is necessary to apply even as they lead and govern us, O oh God. We want to thank you again even for the Christian leaders, O oh God, that we have. We pray that they may draw from you, O oh God. May your anointing rest abundantly upon, Father, every Christian leader, O oh God, that they also may draw from you the counsel and, and, and the word, O oh God, and the wisdom that they need to apply even as we, 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 we walk under the, your counsel, O oh God. We want to, again, remember even our Jew. We bless him even tonight in Jesus' name. And thank you, God, even as he continues to minister in the far land, the U.S., O oh God. We pray that your anointing shall rest upon him mightily, O oh God, that he shall draw from you. Father, that which he needs to share to your people. Father, inspired by your spirit, O oh God. We pray even for the rest of our leadership, O oh God, as a church, that, God, you shall continue to keep watch over this, the leader that you've set, O oh God, that they, again, Father, they shall draw from you the counsel that they need to apply even as they lead your people, God. You shall speak to them even as they speak to us, O oh God. Father, all to the glory and the honor of your name. We give you thanks even for the offerings of your people. Father, we pray again, may you bless, Father, the givings of your people. And them that maybe do not have God, we pray in Jesus' name that you shall remember them, O oh God, and bless them that they may have also a portion to give even as they come to the sanctuary. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So you bring your offerings and uh, let me just hand over back to Shikuku so that he can finish with the word of praise. Amen. Amen. Can we appreciate our deacon for... Amen. Thank you. On behalf of the Berean Bible Study, we really want to extend uh, our joy. Our joy and gratitude to all of you for coming for the Berean Bible Study. We always say that we take time to prepare. So if we come and we find you present here to be ministered to, it's just a great thing. Those who are in the media, the ushering team, the Sunday, those who are from Sunday, all, all, all ministries represented, may you feel appreciated. The choir members that I've seen around, uh, Redemption Voices, in, indeed, we are uh, growing. So I want us to rise on our feet. We take the words of grace, and please, if you are doing an uh, online giving, our pay bill number is running on the screen. It is 844-632. Uh, you write there, Brian. And if you are doing physical, you just bring in the box here. God bless you. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Greet someone. Wish them all the best. Invite them for the Kesha tomorrow. 
And if they are youths, tell them about the Level Up Conference. And may God bless you. Thank you. Amen.